Hello everybody and welcome to this video in our series about graph data science. In this video we're going to learn about Neo4j's graph data science library and how it aims to simplify the graph data science experience. So first let's have a look at what the traditional data science experience would be, especially when we're working with graphs. Uh, so we start, start over on the left hand side, so we'd be doing some data modeling, we'd be trying to work out okay, how we're going to shape this data into a graph. So perhaps we're starting with the data in some flat files or maybe in a relational database, so we've got to figure out, okay, we're going to, got to build a graph, then we're going to work out, okay, which library we're going to use, which algorithms we're going to use, so maybe we're using a Python library, so we've got to go and find there, and maybe there are lots of different libraries to choose from, and we don't really know which one to pick, and then we find one, and maybe there aren't really any docs, we pick a library, we're like, okay, well, now I've got to go and learn the syntax of that new library, we're then going to make sure we've got our data shaped into the right format to, to work in this library, and then finally, we've got to analyze the results and figure out how we're going to get this into production. Uh, and so this is what the, the Neo4j's Graph Data Science Library and indeed the Graph Data Science Platform aims to solve. Uh, and so like we talked about in a previous video, there are a set of tools that can help us work uh, with gra ne Graph Data Science. Uh, so we start with the Neo4j database, which hopefully you'll be already be familiar with. Uh, we've got our Cypher query language there, and so this is a, um, a, t a product that allows you to natively store and query graphs. Uh, so that's, that's the centerpiece of our graph data science platform. And then either side, we've got two tools. As uh, so we've got on the left, we've got the Neo4j graph data science library. So this is allowing us to, to run app graph, graph algorithms uh, over, over this data. Uh, and then on the right hand side, and we're not going to be talking about that so much in this video, we've got Neo4j Bloom. And this is a, a tool for doing visual graph exploration uh, of the results from the graph data science library. Uh, so what is the graph data science library? So it's a couple of things. Uh, so the first thing is it's a uh, it's a graph catalog, and so this means it's a in-memory uh, analytics version of the graph. So a version of the graph optimized uh, for running analytics workloads on it. And then it's a set of algorithms that can run on that in-memory graph. Uh, and so we need to have that in-memory graph because we can't run the algorithms fast enough if we have it just running directly from the, uh, from the database itself. Uh, and it's an optimized format uh, for doing uh, these types of workloads. So how does it work? So there, there are two ways that we can use it. So we can either um, run it, so it load it so that as part of the algorithm um, running, it loads a projected graph and then executes the algorithm. Or equally, we can separately load that projected graph and then we can run lots of different algorithms uh, over it. And so we'd probably be using the, uh, the one where we're uh, loading the projected graph while running the algorithm when we're just playing around uh, and getting the hang of it. But then once we're in production, we're going to want to load that projected graph separately and then run our algorithms over it. Uh, and then we can either choose to store the results directly into Neo4j, or we can actually update the in-memory graph itself. Uh, so what types of algorithms can we run on it? So we've looked at some of these in an earlier video. So there are five different types. So we've got pathfinding and search. This is, hey, can I find my, can I find the shortest path between uh, two places? We've got centrality, or can I find the important nodes in my graph? We've got community detection, which are, can I find clusters or partitions in my graph? We've got link prediction, uh, how likely are nodes to form a future relationship? And then we've got the similarity algorithms, which tell us how alike uh, two nodes are. And so all of this leads to a more pleasant data science experience. Uh, so we've got simple and standardized APIs. So all of the algorithms have the same API. So once we've learned how to use it for one of the algorithms, we can just reuse our knowledge across the other ones. Uh, there are documentation and usage examples for each of the algorithms. So if we want to just copy paste those examples and then adapt them to our own data sets, we can do that. Uh, the usage experience is, has been is, is very friendly. So if you if you make a typo, uh, it will it will give you some um, sort of a friendly error message. Um, we have. Uh, procedures that can compute memory management, so you can check before you run it, make sure you're not going to go out of memory by running an algorithm. Uh, and then once we've got the results, uh, we can go and explore them in a tool like Bloom to make sure they even make any sort of sense before we productionize it. Uh, and so all of this leads hopefully to a, if we go back to our initial slide, to a simplified data science experience. So uh, data modeling is not such a problem because with Neo4j, the data is already a graph. Uh, we've got uh, easy docs to work with. We've got algorithms that have been validated on big data sets. There are tutorials to go with these. Uh, the Neo4j syntax is standardized and simplified. Uh, you can reshape your data very easily just with a simple command. Um, and then we can easily write the results to Neo4j uh, and move it straight into production. Uh, so that's the end of this video on the Neo4j graph data science library. Uh, hopefully now you've got a good understanding of how this makes the graph data science experience much better. Uh, and in, in our next video, we're going to look at how we can actually go about using this library.